Thank you for joining us for another part of our high altitude ballooning explanation videos. My name is Gigi Lanchbaum and I'm working here at the Fort Hayes State Makerspace. This video will show you the steps that we go through for one of our typical high altitude balloon launches. We try to start our balloon launches early in the morning for two reasons. One, there's usually less wind first thing in the morning and two, that gives us the whole day to chase if we need it. Here you can see us unpacking the van and starting to cut strings to length. We use kite string with a strength of between 50 and 100 pounds to tie the payloads together and into the parachute and the balloon stack. We try to put about four or five feet of string between each component in the stack so they do not get tangled with each other. We have set up here in the middle of the parking lot next to the Coliseum on campus so that we have a large open space to launch the balloon. You need to make sure you're away from power lines and things like that. Here you can see me unloading the helium bottles. For a typical launch, we will use two full helium bottles. This is for a 1200 or 1500 gram balloon. Here's a tip, instead of just trying to carry the bottles, you can roll them on the bottom edge like I'm doing here. Makes them much easier to move. The bottles are fairly heavy. They have to be made of thick metal to resist the pressurized helium. You can see how we've laid a large sheet on the ground here. That is to protect the balloon as we are setting it up and inflating it. The balloons are very delicate. You do not want them touching the ground. Before the box is sealed, we want to make sure that the GPS is working. We can go online and check to see that it's, it's sending out a signal and that the signal is being received by the network. After we're sure that everything in the payload is working properly, we go ahead and seal up the payload box. We keep our ballooning supplies in these large plastic rolling tool boxes. It makes them a good way to organize the supplies and move them around easily. It is important to make sure that the lines of the parachute are not tangled. That way it will unfurl correctly and let the payload gently come back to the surface. We use parachutes with a seven foot diameter, usually. Here you can see Dr. Adams tying together strings to make the ladder lines. We like to put a knot in the strings about every foot. That way you have a good place to hold the string when we're launching the balloon. Now we have our helium tanks laid out and I'm connecting the fill valve onto the regulators. When we lay out the stack of a balloon payload, it goes like this. The balloon on top, then about five feet of string, then the parachute, then about five feet of string, then our communications box, another five foot string spacing, and then the payload boxes. If you have multiple payload boxes, you will also space them out about five feet apart. We wrap duct tape over all the knots in the strings to help keep it from coming loose. You need to make sure all the knots are very secure because you don't want some of your payload to fall off during flight. High winds in the upper atmosphere can put a lot of stress onto the strings and the knots. Sometimes on cold mornings, it's really hard to tie the knots in these strings when your fingers get numb. We want to have all of the equipment turned on and all the boxes sealed before we string them together in the stack. And we need all of the strings in the stack to be securely tied before we start to inflate the balloon. We always weigh our payloads when we're assembling them, but it's a good idea to double check before you launch. With a 1200 gram balloon, typically we will launch between 8 and 10 pounds of equipment. The balloons we use are made of latex and they are about 8 feet in diameter when inflated at ground level. We duct tape the neck of the balloon 
onto the filler. It's a good idea to have several helpers when you're inflating the balloon, especially if there's any ground level winds. One person will need to hold on to the balloon at the neck to make sure it's securely on the filler. Other people, if available, can be used to help stabilize the balloon as it inflates. And another person will run the fill valve on the helium tank. If you don't have enough people, the balloon can sometimes get out of your control in the wind. We will completely empty one of the helium bottles. Then we have to remove the filler and attach it to the second bottle. Depending on the size of your balloon, you may only use half of the second bottle or all of the second bottle. Everyone who touches the balloon must wear gloves. The oils from your hand can damage the balloon and make it pop early if you touch it barehanded. Once you think the balloon is full, you can test it by using a weight to see how much upward lift the balloon has. Typically we will do this by tying a 15 pound dumbbell onto the filler. Once the balloon starts to lift this off the ground, we know that it will have enough lift to carry our payload. The weight also helps keep the balloon from flying away while you're filling it, just as an extra safety anchor. If it has enough then you're ready to launch. If not, you can add a little more helium. When the balloon is filled, we will twist the neck of the balloon so that the helium does not get out, hold on to that neck securely, then untape the fill and remove it. Then we will take our string coming from the top of the parachute in the stack, loop it around the neck of the balloon, then we wrap it up with a lot of duct tape so that it's nice and tight and the knot can't come loose. Duct tape really is the secret ingredient. Now that our balloon's full and attached to the stack, we will use the ladder line to start gently raising the balloon into the air. The knots that you have tied in the ladder line give you a handhold so you can let it up gently but securely. We will get it up in the air and then we try to release on a specific time. We want to check our time and make sure we write down exactly when the balloon lifted off. That way later we can synchronize the LabQuest data and the camera video and the tracking information from the APRS. As we let the balloon up into the air, you can see why we don't want to be near any power lines because it could easily get tangled on them. And away we go. And the balloon is away. It rises very quickly. In just a few minutes it will be 10,000 feet up in the air. Typically the balloon can be visually seen for about five minutes. Then it will be too far away. After that we'll have to track it with our APRS radio and our GPS spot tracker. It will fly for around 90 minutes before it lands. Hopefully all our data recording will work properly and we'll get some nice video footage also. But we won't know until we retrieve the payload and look at it. Well, thank you again for watching another one of our high altitude ballooning explanation videos from the Fort Hayes State Makerspace. Thank you.